Hi friends, Justin Hibbert here, host of the Why Catholic Podcast with another frequently asked Catholic question, which I try to answer in about five minutes or less. So today's question is, why do Catholics call Mary the mother of God? Well, let's start with the short answer. The short answer is because Jesus is fully God, Mary is his mother, therefore Mary is the mother of God. A lot of times, especially Protestants or certain groups of Protestants, brush back on this idea that we call Mary the mother of God. And I think they do it for a couple of reasons. One, I think it's a misunderstanding of what we mean by the mother of God. They think that we're asserting that we're saying that Mary is like this elevated God creature or goddess, that she's the mother of the triune God. I think sometimes people just, they feel like this takes away from the nature of Jesus. I want to actually tell you today that it's actually the opposite, and we need to go all the way back to the 5th century, to 431 AD, when the church met at the Council of Ephesus. Now, the reason why churches, the church gets together at a council is typically because there's a long-standing doctrine that has been called into question, and it's been debated in the public square, and it's actually causing a level of division. And so the church leaders need to get together. Uh, talk about the issue, debate on it, and decide and put the issue to bed and settle it once and for all. So in the Council of Ephesus, they were debating this idea of the Nestorian heresy. Now, Nestorianism claimed that Jesus had two separate natures. He was human at some points, and he was divine at some points. And there were some variations to this, but the church fathers, they got together, the church bishops got together there in Ephesus, and they said, Said, you know what? The apostles taught us and taught the earliest Christians, and they taught the next generation of Christians, and so on and so forth. And it's affirmed in Scripture that Jesus did not have two separate natures, but was fully human and fully divine, always divine. He never shed off his divinity at any point in his incarnation and human experience, even in his death. So this is what we call the hypostatic union, that Jesus was fully God, fully man. Now, whenever a council gets together, because, you know, travel wasn't easy back then, so they'll decide on some other things at the same time. And one of the things that they claim that this is a dogma now of the church, it's it's not up for debate anymore, um, is this idea that Mary is called the Theotokos. Now, this had been used as a title for Mary long before that, but they, to affirm Jesus's nature as fully divine and fully human, they say, said, you know what, this is so true, we're, we're going to dogmatically call Mary the Theotokos, and that's the Greek word meaning God-bearer, and we translate it to the mother of God. Now, let's talk about the objections. So, Mary is not a goddess. She is a human being in, in heaven, but she has a very special role in that she was given a unique position as the mother of of Jesus, the mother of the Messiah, the mother of the incarnate God. But she is not the mother of God the Father. She is not the mother of the Holy Spirit. She is not the mother of the triune God. She is the mother of Jesus Christ. Now, the other thing that I think people think is that we somehow take away from Jesus when we talk about Mary. So let me actually tell you that it's the opposite. The whole reason to call Mary the Theotokos is to affirm the nature of Jesus, that he is fully divine. You know, the other thing I think about this is that, you know, when we try to strip away things about Mary and her uniqueness and her role, we actually take away from the uniqueness of Christianity. There is no other religion out there where you have this idea that God, the God of the heavens, the creator of the universe, comes down from his throne and becomes one of us. And he uses one of us in that process. Isn't that so beautiful? Hey, I hope that you'll subscribe here on YouTube, as well as check out the description where I have links to the Why Catholic podcast and some other goodies in there as well. So thanks so much for listening. God bless you.